required me to have a license. I attended a Saturday morning class. My instructor owned a funeral business. A driving instructor who owns a mortuary isn't morbid at all. If someone died in class, they would be taken care of. He assured us our families would get a discount. After obtaining my license, I would rent cars to drive to work. I couldn't afford to buy a car. And I worked from home, so I didn't need to go out a lot. I rented economy-sized cars, which would be cheap, but with insurance, the price would go from $17 a day to $500, I kid you not. The last time I rented a car, it was the largest car I ever rented, a white, Chrysler Seabrook. It felt like a stretch Hummer compared to the Versus and Ford Fiestas I rented. I am convinced I must have looked like a strange giraffe to the other drivers in those small cars. I drove the Sebring home. My parking garage and my building was six levels. My spot was on the sixth level. There were yellow posts at each turn going up to prevent drivers from hitting cars parked on the ends. While going up to my parking spot, I heard a screeching sound. I was new to driving, so I thought it was normal. I kept driving. The sound continued. I slowed down. Then I heard a thump, something heavy dropping to the ground. I looked over, and the side view mirror was missing. Not only did the mirror fall off, but the whole side of the car was yellow and pushed inward. I didn't realize I hit the yellow post. I called my older, more rebellious sister. We have two options, she said. We could steal a white Sebring and replace the door or take it to a chop shop. As tempting as stealing a car was, I was like, nah, <laughs> let's go with option two. We shopped around at various chop shops until we found the best deal at only $500. They ordered a new mirror and installed it they popped out the dents and painted the side sparkle white. It was beautiful, like it could be on the cover of Hot Car Magazine with a hot girl in a bikini showing it off. On the way to return the car, I turned on the AC. It was about 80 degrees outside. White, paint chips, blue, out of the air vents, everywhere in the car and over me. I drove to the closest gas station, and luckily, there was a coin-operated vacuum. I have never vacuumed so fast in my life. It was as if I was on coke, meth, and red pill at the same time. <laughs>
For those of you who don't know about the color purple, the color purple is a, a book about um, a bunch of letters, about 89 letters from um, Celie to her sister Nettie. And um, it's a book about strength and hope and courage. And the way, because it's banned, I'm like, I don't, I don't understand that. But you all get a piece right now. Get to get an amen? Yeah. All right, y'all. Dear God, it took him the whole spring from March to June to make up his mind to take me. All I thought about was Nick. How she could come to me if I married him and he'd be so in love struck with her I could figure out a way for us to run away. Us both be hitting at these school books pretty hard cause he know we got to be smart to get away. I know I'm not as pretty or as smart as Danny, but she say I ain't dumb. The way you, the way you know who discover American Nettie say is think about cucumbers. That what Columbus sound like. I learned all about Columbus in first grade, but look like the, he the first thing I forgot. He said Columbus come here in boats called the Peter, the Peter, and the Santa Maria. <laughs> Indians so nice to him, he forced a bunch of them back home with him to wait on the queen. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to think with getting married to Mister hanging over my head. The first time I took, I got Big Pa took me out of school. He never cared that I love it. Nettie stood there at the gate, holding tight to my hand. I was all dressed for the first day. You too dumb to be to keep get going to school, Pa say. Nettie, the clever one in this bunch. But Pa, Nettie say, crying. Celie's smart too. Even Miss Beasley say so. Nettie don't know Miss Beasley, think nobody like her in the world. Pa say, whoever listening to anything Nettie Beasley had to say, she went off at the mouth so much, no man would have her. That how come she had to teach school. He never looked up from the cleaning of his gun. Pretty soon, a bunch of white men come walking across the yard. They have guns too. Jamie asked Chloe to get to the balcony. With them, afterwards, they had ice cream, sodas, Jane imitated the ballet dancers, and Chloe laughed so hard, she got soda up her nose. Bonnie and Jane taught Chloe to sing. She fell in the water at the dog, and Jamie fished her out. After they dried her off, Chloe said, that was the most fun I ever At night, Chloe played board games with Bonnie and Jamie, they toasted marshmallows in the fireplace. I wish both of you were my uncles, said Chloe. You get your wish, sweetheart, said Bobby. When we get married, you'll have an uncle Jamie too. You'll still be my one and only Uncle Bobby, though, promised Chloe. And when we get married, said Jamie, would you do us the honor of being our flower girl? What kind of cake are you having, asked Chloe. What kind of cake would you like, asked Jamie. Carrot cake, said Chloe. Carrot cake it is, said Jamie. Okay, said Chloe, I'll be your flower girl. <laughs> on the day of the wedding, Chloe put on her new dress. Everyone was excited and busy. Uncle Bobby lost the rings. Jamie couldn't tie his own bow tie. Chloe found the rings in Bobby's ja jacket pocket. She helped Jamie with his tie and she held Mama put with her 